You're a Christian, and yet for some reason, your trajectory for holiness and happiness are kind of in the dumps. How do you go about feeling joy, happiness, if you will, but joy is always better than happiness, and growing in sanctification? That is the question that distinguishes biblical Christianity from every other religious system on the planet. Let's take a look and see how sanctification works in other religious systems and how it works in biblical Christianity. Every other system besides grace alone, faith alone, and Jesus Christ alone basically goes like this. I'm going to do better. I'm going to try harder. I'm going to become more holy. I've determined it in my mind. That is what I am going to do. So I look for the rules, I look for the system, I look for the guidebook, and I determine, I'm going to do this. And so you apply effort. And in this instance, it's a monergistic effort. It is you and you alone. Your strength, your efforts, your desires. I'm going to get better at this thing. I'm going to get holier so that I can become holy and God will be happy with me. That is every other system besides biblical Christianity. But here's the tricky part when it comes to you and me. Even though we're in Christ, we can think this. We can actually start acting like this ourselves. We forget something and we start working, we start trying, we start doing in an effort to please God. And if I don't do this stuff, God is not happy with me. That is not biblical Christianity. And I'm not saying you're not a Christian when you think like that. We all can fall into that legalistic trap. What I'm saying is we need to work to not think and act like this. Here's the difference. I'm going to try. Where are the rules? My effort on becoming more holy. And then God is happy with me. That's everything else. Biblical Christianity has a completely different starting point. Biblical Christianity says, God is already pleased with me because of the gospel. That's my starting, it's not my ending point. It's my starting point. Is that radical or what? If you've repented and put your trust in Jesus Christ, you are in Christ. You have been taken from in Adam, who failed, who sinned, who allowed you to be born a sinner, who was your federal head, you're imputed, you are sinful, you're totally depraved because of him. But if you're in Christ, God is fully pleased with you. And he's as pleased with you when you're not sinning as when you are. I know that's radical, but God is as pleased with you when you, even as a Christian, sin. You're yelling at, okay, you're yelling at the kids. You know, whatever it is that you say. You're carping on them for slamming the door, for leaving the shoes in the path where they walk in, they didn't feed the dog, and you're yelling at them. Versus, you're in your quiet time. When is God more pleased with you? Just a small caveat, we do things that can please God. We do things that can grieve God. I'm talking about your position with God and his attitude toward you. He always sees you as if you are Christ himself, if you are in Christ himself. So whether you are yelling at the kids or reading your Bible, God is fully pleased with you because you are in Christ. That is the starting point of biblical Christianity. And when you study this, when you stare at this, when you focus at this, then guess what happens? Now you have a desire to do what? To grow in holiness, to be pleasing to him because you don't want to sin anymore. And then your effort to grow in holiness is synergistic. It's you and the Holy Spirit working together, getting progressively better and becoming more and more holy. But it is not to satisfy God and make him happy. It's because God is satisfied and he is fully pleased with you because you are in Jesus Christ. That's the difference between biblical Christianity and every Buddhism, Hinduism. You name the ism and if it's not biblical Christianity that starts with the gospel and God is fully pleased with you if you are in Christ, then it's a different system and it's completely backwards. And this system, by the way, 
is the road to depression. It's the road to misery. It is the road to constant regret, feelings of guilt. This path is the pathway of joy and delight and not duty and demand.